is the real shocker of the behind the scenes. If you go to their website and look at who's funding them, uh, your eyes are going to pop right out of your head. It's some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies. And why do I find that as a uh, conspiratologist? You might call me a conspiratorial uh, journalist. Why do I find that strange and interesting? Uh, well, because the pharmaceutical companies are in charge of pumping out all those uh, anti-AIDS um, drugs, all those anti-AIDS, uh, anti-HIV cocktails, and all the experimental drugs that they pumped out there. And this... Um, and this uh, uh, is about $5 billion worth of uh, the chunk of pharmaceuticals, just AIDS-related medicine, okay? That's an actual statistic I can throw out there. $5 billion per year uh, is the profit of the uh, AIDS-related pharmaceuticals. So is the game and health crisis interested in, in pushing the cocktail? Uh, version of, of curing AIDS uh, or fighting AIDS? Oh, yes, of course, that's what they are there for. Um, so the Health Latex Project was something that branched out and was something uh, somewhat independent in the sense that it became a, a house. So, you know, I think the thinking there uh, might have uh, sometimes come up against the, the upper management's thinking, and I think that the um, there's a certain measure of independence uh, because the Latex was actually a house with a lot of members. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a loose cannon there somewhere. There's some loose cannons there. Uh, but ultimately, the gay men's health crisis put a big, um, you know, big damper on uh, the possibility of natural cures, um, you know, for, for HIV infection, et cetera. So I find that uh, disheartening and, um, and, can, and, you know, somewhat conspiratorial, yeah. Word. Wow. And, and, and how do you feel about Luna... And grandfather Hector Extravaganza, the grandfather of the House of Latex. Right, right, right. Uh, to me, the extravaganzas are, um, <laughs> Being so what can cool. I say, uh, absolute heroes to me. Uh, they're one of the original houses. They, um, you know, they're a Latin, you know, Latino house. Uh, they are um, always stood strong in the scene, always were snatching, and, and also... Uh, I, I feel like they uh, did have a vision for the House of Latex, and I think that Arbert was part of that vision, central to that vision. And that vision was to educate. This is on a very positive note. It was to educate um, the younger uh, members of the community, uh, the true children, so to speak, because guess what? You know, they are out there having unprotected sex. That happens every day. Okay. Uh, they are out no there... Shade. But the girls are acting like they're saints. <laughs> yeah, you know. And, and also, guess what? There's the club scene, and there used to be, you know, even a heavier club scene uh, in the sense of, um, you know, a little bit more risque stuff going on in the clubs, you know, that sells. Uh, and and that, that leads to so much, you know, um, uh, let's say fluid interaction <laughs> that... Um, <laughs> You know, you need all the help you can get out there. You, you need the safe sex materials. You need the condoms. You also need uh, the, the, the mindset that the House of Latex was able to bring to the table. And I think that they became so well-respected in the community, at least for a short while. I don't really see them as being a huge uh, influence anymore, uh, but that might be due to mismanagement or whatever. But the, the particular... Um, mindset of um, of keeping ourselves safe and keeping each other uh, more safe, I think, was a major factor behind that, and I applaud that in myself. Work. Nice. We do applaud that. Yep. Now, how did you meet Christina Grant Infinity? Let's go into okay. that. Okay. Uh, I came down to uh, Miami area to visit with um, with Danny Tiberius Ninja before he made his move out of uh, Florida. Uh, Danny came down here to do so much work uh, for the House of Ninja, as you know. Right. Shout uh, out to the House down, of Ninja, by the way. Shout, yeah, and uh, big time. And uh, I came down here to spend some more time with him because we have so much business to wrap up with. the. Uh, we have to put a new cover on our book. Uh, we have to uh, still, you know, alter a couple of the, the last chapters uh, to Danny's liking. So, you know, it's an unfinished project in a strange way. 
uh, to talk about some of the possibilities of a newer book. And uh, just to really rehash and revisit, I hadn't seen uh, Danny himself in about, oh gosh, I don't know, it could be upwards of, um, you know, 11 or 12 years or something like that. So I came down here to, to, to re, to re uh, establish myself down here. Uh, and during that time, Christina came over and uh, joined us at, at Danny's apartment a few times. And I was able to get to know, uh, to know her. And, um, yeah, I mean, just the absolute shock uh, to hear that this person is, is actually actually dead and actually murdered. I mean, we're not talking about people that just die. It's one thing when people pass from HIV, which is sad enough, or they die of natural causes. It's a whole different ballgame when someone gets killed and murdered by some other human being, you know. This is a, um, uh, always a shock to my system. Uh, it, it should send uh, some major shockwaves through the community, especially with the statistics that we're looking at this year. It's just not pretty. Wow. There, there are, there's some controversy regarding Christina's use of uh, pumping silicone injections into trans women's and drag queens for feminization purposes as well as trans right. men and butch queens for masculization purposes. Do you think right. silicone should be uh, regulated by the uh, FDA and the underground procedures be legalized for anyone who may need it? Um, that's an important uh, question and a very big issue you bring up, uh, Izzy. This is not a joke at all. Um, uh, there's been a lot of accidents with uh, silicone. Uh, I can I can list a number of them that I've seen with my my you know first hand eyes, uh, and um, I know of one very famous, uh, very world famous transgender person uh, who actually died of silicone poisoning. So. Uh, it is a major issue. Uh, I, I really think that uh, the answer, um, the answer might be regulation, and I'll and I'll tell you why. I'm not a big guy on uh, on regulation from the government. I'm not, but it tends to uh, it tends to orient things in a much more orderly fashion. It tends to bring them up out of the underground and into the the larger society, and there, then there tends to be a lot more. Um, uh, knowledge and and let's even put it frankly, you know, cleanlier uh, uh, administrations of such procedures, uh, which we've uh, you know we've all know the horror stories that can be uh, from dirty needles or or mis misled injections or something like that. So yeah, do I ultimately agree uh, with you that it, or or would I say that it should be regulated? Absolutely. I think it's an issue that should, I think all these issues should be brought into the larger society and not hidden underground anymore. I mean, you know, those days are over. We're now in a very sunshine uh, era. So, yeah, I do think it should be regulated. Wow. Now, were you shocked by Christina's murder shortly after you meeting her? Absolutely shocked. In fact, I'm still in shock of it. Uh, it's 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 very close that when you know somebody, even if you don't know them well, and then someone tells you they were murdered, um, it's 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 a weird and eerie feeling, as you, as you know. There, there's also another factor here. This is a transgender person. Transgender persons uh, have stati here's a statistic again. The the most violence uh, towards a gr single grouping of human beings on the planet is violence towards transgender people. Uh, this issue uh, comes up in, in our book over and over again in a fictionalized way, of course, but in, in, in a real way. And, and, and uh, this issue is, is just blown out of, out of the water this year, 2015, where we've had a statistic of a, a murder per week, a murder per week, not just of violent activity. Murder is the most violent activity. You can't get much more violent than that. Uh, <laughs> And, um, yeah, I think that as a, as a grouping, as a category uh, of, of, of uh, the spectrum of human people, to have that statistic there is, is heart-rendering. And uh, it, it really speaks to the, to the inequality uh, of gender-variant people in the society, and it also speaks uh, to, the, um, to the writing off, if you will. Oh, that's just another you know, angry boyfriend, or, or that's just another uh, tramp, you know, who was out there tricking, okay? These are the, the gut-level reactions 
that some people will spill out, and it's just a terrible thing uh, because you find like somebody like Venus Extravaganza, who is um, just a, an amazing all-around person, uh, <clears throat> just really alive and really funny and really smart. And yeah, she did some prostitution. Uh, like she said, she had to. You know, there was nothing else she could do to put food on the table, uh, and it wasn't her first choice. Uh, but she could do it because, guess what, she's now a beautiful woman. Uh, she's, um, you know, uh, living her life as a beautiful woman, and obviously that's going to attract uh, some paying customers and stuff like that. Uh, so you're talking about a real issue here. Uh, you're talking about uh, a real serious problem. It's a problem that's so serious that I'm hoping that my discussion of it and our discussion of it tonight uh, would be that catalyst for to get people out in the streets with these numbers on piece of paper and say, hey, listen, society, uh, we, we can't let our people get killed like this. Right. We're not going down like that. Right, exactly. Well put. And her alleged boyfriend and no one has been convicted or brought to justice, huh? I've been following the story. In fact, I even had the detective's uh, telephone number who was handing the story. I did not call him for this article. Uh, as a matter of record, but I was going to. Um, so, yeah, I've been following the story. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody's been brought in, no. It doesn't look like he's been found. He might have skipped uh, state. He might have skipped country. We don't know. Uh, but that is the suspect. That's the main suspect. Uh, one of the things that I find uh, in... in, in I study murder all the time uh, because of being a journalist in the conspiratory realm. Uh, I study murder all the time, and, and murder is is rarely an act of passion. Okay, uh, crimes of passion are the, are rarity. Murder is. 99% premeditated, which means that the person either is mad enough to say, I'm going to go back there at a certain point when I know I can, uh, or it might get a little deeper. It might get into mafia involvement, uh, literally um, gang involvement. Now, I don't know whether you know this, but there are certain gangs out there that uh, their members have to murder somebody to get to stay in the gang. And what you'll find is that they'll tattoo a teardrop either on their hand or their eye, usually their eye or somewhere on their face or something. Guess what that teardrop meant? I killed somebody. Right. So gangland violence, okay, figures really big to me uh, in murder as a crime statistic in general. And gangland violence to me stands very prominent uh, in the transgender murder. So I'm, I'm looking to probably even eventually write a short book on just that very subject, I think it deserves that kind of attention, that gangland murder, and this is often where we see things like ritual murder, uh, murder where, you know, um, there's a ritual kind of activity involved, disembowelment, uh, or slitting the throat, so saying you'll never talk again, or cutting out the tongue, that means you'll never talk again, of course. These are mafioso and or, or gangland, uh, what we what we term ritual murder. Right, right. And and let's talk a little bit about, you know, Eddie Murphy. He was arrested with another trans woman in 1987. Right. And then she right. was found dead in California. She supposedly fell from a fire escape. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to include the Eddie Murphy stuff in the talk, and then it just got so wrapped up into so many people that I actually knew front face. And and wanted to talk about the activists like uh, like Duana and Marcia so much. But, yeah, I actually really should have included that. It turns out that, um, I don't know whether you know this about the Eddie Murphy case, he hired two lawyers, two of the biggest Hollywood lawyers to hush this up. Those lawyers sent people around to uh, his transgender lovers, okay? Tra Eddie Murphy apparently had several transgender lovers, um, and asked them to hush it up and tell them, uh, the public, that is, the reporters and, and stuff, the news people, uh, please don't mention Eddie's name in conjunction with anything. Guess who said, no, I'm not going to do that, and guess who was found thrown out the window? Wow. She said no. She said no to the lawyers. I'm not going to uh, hush it up. I'll speak my mind if I ever want to. And yep, yep, she was found uh, also... Uh, brutally murdered. So you, you you might have some blood on good old Eddie's hands. Yeah. Mm. Right. How, how, how he laughs. 
I don't know. Anyway, yeah. let's talk a little bit about Natasha, who also pumped silicone for years and, and is also rumored to have been found dead in the Dominican Republic. Any thoughts on